and the Bible reads, Now when much time was spent, and when selling was now dangerous, because the fast was now already passed, Paul admonished them and said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much danger, damage, mm -hmm. not only of the lighting and ship, but also of our lives. Well, nevertheless, mm -hmm. the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which are spoken by Paul. How many of y'all going through some stuff? How many of you been through some stuff? I want to speak to you from the title of shipwreck, but not dead. I'm shipwrecked, but not dead. You may have to see. I am shipwrecked, but not dead. I probably should have been, but I'm not. How many of us can look back over our lives and we can realize that it's only because of grace of God that we have lived as long as we have? Amen. Out of all the comrades, out of all the drug overdose, out of all the gang violence, the drownings, and so many other circumstances that have taken the lives of those who have been close to us, sometimes we have to just sit back and say, Lord, thank you. Thank you. That could have been me. It should have been me. It would have been me. Some of you right here, right now, know that if it wasn't for the grace of God, you would have died in that car wreck. If it wasn't for the grace of the God, those doctors would have gave up on you and you would have been gone. If it wasn't for the grace of the come God, on, on, you would have been spending your life behind the prison walls. But thanks be to God that you are here on this morning. So we began this message with Paul advising them not to sail. In verse number 10, he says, And unto them, sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the landing and the ship, but also our lives. How many of us realize that we, we don't always listen to wise counsel? Well, okay. We could have saved ourselves a lot of grief and a lot of pain if we had just listened to those who were trying to give us the right instructions. Yeah. And just like these people in the book of Acts and like some of us, they didn't listen to Paul and they sailed directly into the storm of their lives. So what did they do? What they had to do, if you read in the further part of this story, is that they had to lighten the ship. What they understood is that they had to take some extra baggage off the ship. See, there's nothing like a bad storm for realigning your priorities because when you're going through a storm, you find out real quick what you need and what is necessary and what needs to go. So you're going to realize that there's some people that's holding on to you right now that's trying to hold you back from right. moving forward and God is trying to release those people from out of your lives. Or you may be wondering, why haven't you talked to that person in such a long time? Y'all used to be so close. It's because uh, God was in that conversation when you wasn't around, when they was having with those other people and they was praying for your downfall. So what they realized is that they was letting some extra baggage go and the ship was eventually destroyed. They were determined to get to their destination, even if it meant that they had to make it to the land on board. You realize in this story that uh, the text tells us that there was broken pieces of the ship. Somebody ought to be lifting your hands right now and say, Lord, I'm broken, but I'm still coming. I'm wounded, but I'm still coming. I'm bleeding, I'm crying, I'm confused, I'm rejected. I don't know which way to go, but Lord, just know that I'm still coming. I know I'm not everything I should be. Well, I'm still struggling with some habits and some hangers. Y'all gonna talk back to me? Y'all gonna be honest? I'm still wrestling with some anger and some forgiveness issues. I, I, I may slip up every now and then and say some things uh, that I shouldn't say. I know that I'm not where I should be by now, but I'm moving in the right direction. So we learned that they all escaped safe to land. And all they, although they were messed up from the floor, they was riding on this broken ship, they were still determined to make their destination. You know, like that thing that should have killed you a long time ago, yeah. well, but you made it. And, and most of it is, a, a lot of times, most of it is our fault. We put ourselves in certain situations. We bring certain things onto ourselves, but God had enough mercy yeah. on me and had enough mercy on you to just made it through. And every now and then, you don't know what to say, but 
Uh, if there's nothing else you can, so you ought to just say thank you, Jesus. Not just thanking God for what he's done for you, but start thanking the Lord for what he's getting ready to do for you. Because if you feel that yourself is being blessed right now, the best is yet to come. And so, as you reflect back over your life, and you see all the things that you have been through, there was times that the Lord have already stepped in to try to save us. But we was being disobedient and do what it is we wanted to do. And church, that's why sometimes we have to be careful what we go to the Lord and ask for. Because see, we'll go and ask the Lord to bless us with this relationship or bless us with this certain situation. And he don't give it to us because he knows what's best for us. And then we'll go back to the Lord and pray for the same thing. And then we'll go back to him and pray for the same thing. And then we start questioning God. God, are you really real? He told me if I come to you and if I pray for what it is I want, that you will bless me. But what God is trying to tell you, that's, that's not what you need. Amen. And so sometimes we, we, we disobey God. And we go and we do our own thing and then we get in this situation. And it's at that time we want to call on Lord, Savior Jesus Christ. Say, Lord, if you get me out of this situation, I promise I won't do it again. Lord, if you get me out of this situation, I promise I'll be the church first thing Sunday morning. And what the Lord is doing is that he is trying to tell us that he's giving us something we want. So show us that it's something that we do not need. Amen. So the story says that they made it through the storm. And they landed on an island. It says that Paul began to gather sticks for the fire out of the sticks. And so while Paul is reaching out to build this campfire uh, for his people, there's a viper yep. Come on. Uh, that fastens itself to Paul's hand. And then it says further in the text, it says, how be it they look, which means to watch, to anticipate to wait for. If you didn't get that shot right there, let me put it on, in this on. turn. Play. There are some people who are watching you and who do not want you to make it. They are anxiously waiting and anticipating for your downfall. They rejoice when they see you going through hardships and your trials. And so what they are doing is that they, they, they are watching and they are waiting to celebrate your downfall. They are waiting to celebrate your breakdown. Not your breakthrough, but your breakdown. And most of all, they are waiting to celebrate your defeat. And so on this morning, if you don't get anything else out of this, out of this sermon, I, I, I came to tell somebody that not only that you're going to make it. I don't know what it is that you're going through. It's not my business to know what you're going through. But I just want to give you some hope on this morning to let you know whatever it is you're going through, you will make it. But not only that, this should be a shout for a lot of people. Not only are you going to make it, but you also are not going to even look like right. what you're being through. That should be a praise right there. If you just understood, well, if some people, if the person next to you understood what you've been through, well, they probably didn't want to be next to you. Come on, come on. See, we come to church, and we wear our suits, we wear our dresses, and, and we try to dress up, but behind that suit, behind that dress is a hurting person. Is a person that's going through some things who tried to handle the situation on their own. They done lost uh, uh, sleep at night. They done fought themselves to go to sleep. They done fought themselves to, uh, to wake up this morning. And it's because we have not allowed the Lord, said Jesus Christ, to come in and step in and let him take over. But what the Lord is trying to tell us is that we just got to keep still and be still. Right. See, Man. you go to the Lord in prayer. Don't tell God how he should bless you. All right. Man. He says, take the burdens to the Lord and don't go back and revisit. Don't go back and try to rekindle that relationship with that person. Because, see, God was working behind the scenes. He knew that this person may not have been good for you. He heard the conversations that this person was having with other people. So when people start disappearing out of your life, it's not that you did anything wrong. It's that God has been working behind the scenes because he knew that he had something great for you. And if it's not without him, there's nothing that we cannot do. Amen. So for a little bit, it may look like the enemy is closing in on you. And it may look like that he's going to overtake you. But what Paul is trying to tell us in this text is just keep walking, brothers and sisters. And so while they were walking, God was taking care of their enemies. 
there's a lot of things that God is doing behind the scenes that we don't even know about. That's, right. That's why I said we got to get in the habit of start thanking the Lord for things, not only what he's done for us, but the things that he's preparing for us. Amen. It doesn't matter what they say about you. It doesn't matter what they do to you. It doesn't matter what the doctors say. It doesn't matter what the financial report says. When God gets done, blesses you, you won't even know or even realize or know. Or better yet, somebody won't even recognize the things that you have been through. Okay. And so the only evidence of what you're going through will be a greater faith. See, sometimes we got to, in order to get to the testimony, we got to go through the test. I said, a lot of times we don't want to go through the test. And, and another thing we got to realize is that everybody can't have the same season. Amen. Amen. We can't have the same season. But if you love me the way you love me, then you ought to celebrate my season. And then when your time comes, we're going to celebrate your season. And then when the next person sees it, we, and then we all gonna be celebrating together. See, I, I can't, I can't, I, <laughs> we can't have the same season. I can't be fighting each other and saying we love each other and want to move forward. So somebody might be sitting in the audience and be like, "Bro, but I understand what you're saying, but but you don't understand what I'm going through. You don't understand the hell that I may be going through with this marriage." Come on, mom. Uh, 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 you may not understand the hell that I may be going through with this job, with this sickness, with this financial struggle. Uh, but you ought to be shouting right now that you've been going through what it is you're going through. Because there's some people who wish they could even just be able to move and be able to go through just some of the stuff uh, that you're going through. But right now, you ought to be prophesizing that there's going to be victory on your life. Uh, you need to be prophesizing that devil, you're not going to take my family. You need to be prophesizing that devil, I am going to get that job. And you need to be prophesizing right now that devil, I will be greater than you. What's up? What's up? So let me remind you that you're not the only one who has walked through the fire. See, the Bible tells us about three young Hebrew boys who walked through the fire. And when they came out on the other side, the only evidence that they had been through the fire was that they was liberated from their bondage. Come on. Bondage just simply means the things that the enemy has put on you. They got burned off in the fire. So these Hebrew boys, they came out on the other side with no hurt. Their clothes were not burnt. Their hair was not messed up. And there was not even the smell of smoke on them. I'm telling you that God doesn't always take the heat out of the fire, but he will walk with you through the fire. But you just have to be willing to be able to open up to him and say, Lord, I'm ready for you. Come on, Mom. I'm ready for you. A lot of times we, 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 we dwell on the past. The past is the past for a reason. That's right. Sometimes we gotta let that thing go. We, we done held on it for so long that it's, it's not that other people are holding us in bondage. We're holding our own selves in bondage. It's not that other people uh, 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 don't want you to be blessed, but you, you're holding yourself back from your own blessing. You may be thinking, I shouldn't be here right now. If the devil had his way, I'd be shrunk out on drugs. Or I'd probably be in a mental institution or some hospital room or prison. But I'm here to tell you that you ought to keep your faith in God. Because God is going to bring you out. Amen. And so as we get back to this text here, the Bible says that Paul shook off the beast. Remember he had this viper Come on. that was on his hand. And so... It tells us that this snake had fangs and it was deep into Paul's hand. That viper had attached itself to Paul and that viper had become very violent and aggressive against it. And what God is trying to tell us, there are some things that you can pray about and ask God to take away. And then there are some things that you must become violent and aggressive against. You must shake it loose. You must shake it like your life is depending on it. Come on. Because it does. 
You need to shake that fear loose. Stop being scared to just move forward. You need to shake that depression loose. You need to shake that addiction loose. You need to shake that spirit of hopeless and suicide loose. Whatever it is you're going through, you need to shake it right now. If there's nobody else, you need to shake it for your family. You need to shake it for your health. You need to shake it for your mind. For your ministry, for your finances, somebody ought to be yelling, shake, 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 shake the devil off. All right now. So Paul, Amen. Paul took that viper off into the fire. And so the only question I want you to ask yourself on this morning is, are you living close enough to the fire? All right. Is there a fire in your car? Well, come on. Is there a fire in your home? Mm -hmm. It should have killed you, mm -hmm. but you shook it off. All right. It should have killed me, but I got close to the fire, and the fire delivered me. Well, Amen. That viper should have killed Paul. Mm -hmm. They fully expected him to die, yeah. but he shook it off in the fire. How many of y'all have been doubting? There's some people that are praying on your downfall. There's some things that you want to accomplish in life. And the worst thing is that it's always, sometimes, majority of the time, it's people who are close to you. Well, well. Sometimes it's people who are right there in your inner circle that are praying for your downfall. And so the text tells us that it was the fire that destroyed that thing that was trying to kill Paul. There's someone who are sitting, who is sitting out in the audience who is listening to me. And the devil has sunk something out to try and to destroy you. But it's not going to kill you because you're turning up the heat. Amen. And as the young people say, it's time to get lit. Hey. All right. Sometimes you have to speak to yourself. Amen. Sometimes you have to look in that mirror and even have to tell your neighbor, you know what? Excuse me, but I'm about to turn up the thermostat. All right. So you might want to move to the other side of the room because I'm getting ready to praise like I praised before. See, we was in the Baptist church. I tell you, you have 30 seconds to run around this church real quick and give God some praise. But I don't want to do that in Church of Christ. So I'm just going to tell you, you can stand up, you can clap your hands, you can say amen, you can say thank you, Jesus. But just reflect on what you have been through. And if you want to run around, you can run around however you need to do to praise the Lord. You ought to give him that praise right now. You ought to be praising for your destiny. You ought to be praising for your ministry. You ought to be praising for your children. You ought to be praising for your health. But most of all, you ought to be praising uh, for your church because no time, it is time for us to move forward. It is time for us to get closer to God. And it is time for us to do what the Lord has tempted us to do and that's to go out, save the city of Jacksonville, and let the community know what the Northbound Church of Christ can do for them. You want to tell somebody, I know it should have killed me. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. oh neighbor. Oh. That's the wrong neighbor, but they don't want to talk back to you. Look to the other neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. oh neighbor. Oh, I want them to listen to y'all on limb turn and stand up and say, neighbor, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. oh neighbor. I know it should have killed me, but I'm still here. Oh, yeah. After all the pain that I've been through, oh, I'm still here. Yeah. Devil, I know you meant for evil, but God meant for good. Out of all the things that I've been through, I still have joy. You know, you know, you know, you know it should have killed you. You know that if the devil had his way, you would be dead and gone right now. You know if some people had been able to carry out their intentions, you would be gone right now. But you ought to yell out every now and then, I'm still here. And when you sit at the job and them people are getting on your nerves and you want to give them a good God bless you, you ought to say, I'm still here. When you at home and them bad kids getting on your nerves, eating all your food up in this uh, house because they out of school for the summer, you better say, Lord, I'm still here. I'm about to catch a case. Yes. Let that be your motto for the rest of the year. I'm still 
in here. I'm still in here because God has a plan for my life. And he has a destiny and I'm going to fulfill it. I don't know what you may be going through right now. Y'all going to stand on your feet. Don't take long. Let's go. <sighs> someone, 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 someone is dealing with some things right now. You don't have to wait. Start making your way to the front. Let's pray for you. Let's pray for you so that you can release whatever thing you may be going through.